I'm Julie and I love to travel around Japan, eat all the food I see, and overshare them with you right here at Omunomu. And today, I would like to show how you can travel to three different prefectures in just three days with this one pass. Let's go nom noms! Wanna know how you can travel for cheap using the bullet train? I spent just a bit over 10,000 yen visiting three prefectures in three days using the Tokyo White Pass. This pass is available for all foreign passport holders. That includes both tourists and foreign residents of Japan. Let's see what I got up to. Day 1. Gunma Gunma Prefecture is the leading producer of Daruma in Japan. I visited Takasaki for two simple reasons. Find all the Daruma and try some local gunma cuisines. Let's start with the danuma! As soon as you walk out of Takasaki Station, you'd see these grumpy round figures everywhere. Like this one, next to gunma's mascot, aptly named Gunma-chan. Oh, and hey, that's me. Say hi! Hi! Now, for those who are wondering what these cute danuma dolls are, Here's a brief explanation, and then I got links in the description if you want to find out more. Daruma is this round Japanese traditional doll modeled after Bodhidharma, the founder of Buddhism. Dharma, Daruma. Get it? It is used as a good luck charm and a way of wish making. People would buy Daruma at the start of the year, make a wish and paint the left eye, and when their wish comes true, they'll fill in the right eye too. It's perfect for goal settings. Or if you're like me and just love collecting cute things, I think you'd also like Daruma. Once I was done with exploring all the Daruma around Takasaki Station, I knew I had to head somewhere else if I want to continue my Daruma scavenger hunt. And where else would I go if not to Shorinzan Darumachi, also known as the Daruma Temple. Each year on January 6th and 7th, the temple holds a market where you can buy Daruma dolls from various stalls. Here's a friendly warning though. There were lots of stairs leading up to the temple. But I really appreciated the guards standing on top of each section of the stairs who kindly said to us when we reached the top. It made me feel like, I don't know, I've accomplished something in life, you know? There were also food trucks to create a nice festival atmosphere. But I wasn't there for the food, surprise surprise. I was there for the Daruma, remember? I basically walked around to look for all the Daruma that I could find. And I can tell you, there were a lot. From Daruma lanterns, to Daruma Emma, to Daruma wooden sign, to Daruma vending machines, and I could go on. The temple is located about 20 minutes by bus from Takasaki Station. Or if you want to only use the pass, you can also take the JR Shinetsu train to Gunma Yawata Station and walk for about 20 minutes to get to the temple. Just remember that you gotta preserve some of your energy for those steps up the temple. Now that we're done with the Daruma, let's focus on the food! Before visiting any prefecture in Japan, you really have to search for their local cuisines. Every place has something special for you to try. And because I love food, I did all the trying for you. So here are the five food you should try in Gunma Prefecture. Number one, Sukiyaki. Gunma Prefecture supplies 100% of the ingredients that you need to cook Sukiyaki, which is why Sukiyaki became Gunma's omotenashi dish. They even celebrate Gunma's Sukiyaki Day every November 29th. And I know that you can have sukiyaki anywhere in Japan, especially during the colder months, but it was such a nice experience to eat this with all the local ingredients from the prefecture. Number 2. Mizusawa Udong Mizusawa Udong is a specialty of Ikaho Onsen in Gunma and is one of Japan's three great udong. You can try this udon at Suikoen if you visit Ikaho Onsen. Or if you're only visiting Takasaki like me, you can also have the same udon from Takasaki Ginza restaurant located at the Washington Hotel Plaza near the station. Number 3. Pasta Wait, what? Pasta? That's right, Takasaki is also known as the city of pasta. Gunma has the right soil and temperature for many agricultural crops, and they actually produce most of Japan's wheat. And pasta is so popular in Takasaki 
that they even have an annual King of Pasta competition where different Italian restaurants compete to be crowned the King of Pasta. When we were there, we tried this one. So if you're in Gunma, but you're a little bored of Japanese food, you know what to eat. Number four, okirikomi and joshu chicken. Okirikomi is a hearty meal that's perfect for winter. So it uses chopped vegetables and himokawa udon, another popular udon from Gunma Prefecture. Himokawa udon are hand kneaded flat wide udon. The okirikomi that I tried was served with joshu chicken. Joshu is an area in Gunma Prefecture that is famous for its livestock. I also tried the chicken in skewers form. Number 5. Yakimanju Now, you don't think I'm going to have a top 5 list without any dessert in it, do you? Last but definitely not the least, Yakimanju is sweet bun skewered and then roasted with sweet miso sauce. If you're going to give this dish a try, let me recommend you the best spot to do so. Next to Takasaki Station is a mall called Oppa. Go to the 7th floor and try Yakimanju at Cafe Takasaki Jima. You can give the traditional one a try. Or if you're like us and want to be adventurous, we had the cheese yakimanju. Yep, that's melted cheese all over the sweet manju. Or you can also have this mini parfait with ice cream, whipped cream, azuki beans, and pieces of crispy yakimanju. It was delicious. So please do not leave Takasaki without trying this. I highly recommend it. So those are the five food that you must try when you visit Gunma Prefecture. Which one would you like to try the most? Let me know in the comments below. Now that we're done with Prefecture number one, let's head to day two. Yay! Day two, Tochigi. I visited three interesting spots in Tochigi Prefecture and I'd like to take you with me. Let's go! Number one, culinary adventure at downtown Utsunomiya. Utsunomiya is famous for gyoza, and I don't just mean, oh yeah, the gyozas are good there. I'm talking, look, there's an actual gyoza statue in front of the station. When I was doing research about Utsunomiya, the gyoza statue really grabbed my attention. Tourists have left some really passionate reviews of the statue. Let me read some to you. The gyoza statue is the best statue of food I've ever seen. Probably because I can't think of another food statue. Totally unremarkable. How many statues of gyoza have you seen? This statue definitely proves that gyoza are better eaten than carved into statues. Maybe the most disappointing statue in Japan. And this last one is the best. Incredible piece of art. I mark it for because there is no such thing as perfect art. With such amazing reviews, I was so excited to see this with my own eyes. And it was everything I had imagined. You know, a statue of a gyoza. That's pretty much it. But this really got me excited for the gyoza. Next stop, let's head to Gyoza Street. Yes, there's an actual street called Gyoza Street because this is how serious the tsunomiya is about their gyoza. And on this street, you'd find gyoza restaurants, obviously. You'll also find gyoza signage, gyoza street light, gyoza bus stop sign, gyoza manhole, gyoza vending machines, they don't sell gyoza there, I checked, and more gyoza signage. Looking at all the gyoza definitely made me hungry. So, it's time for lunch. Guess what's on the menu? Because we only have one day in Tochigi, I know that we had to be strategic. And yes, planning for food is serious business. Instead of going to a single restaurant, we decided to visit Kirase. Located at the basement of Mega Donkey in Utsunomiya, Kirase has two separate restaurants, a permanent store and a daily store. We visited the daily store first. In here, the menu changes depending on which day you visit. They have assortment gyoza plates where you can try different gyoza from different stores. It was really fun tasting the different gyoza with the menu in front of us. And what I love about the daily store is you can come back again the next day and try gyoza from different sets of restaurants. So hopefully I'll be back one day. Once we were done, we paid and then walked towards the permanent store. Here you can enjoy gyoza from five famous Utsunomiya gyoza restaurants. 
It's basically like a food court, so once you get seated, you can roam around and order from the different stores. This is what we got. Mentaiko cheese gyoza from Dumon, original gyoza and deep fried gyoza from Min Min, and all star gyoza from Satsuki, which includes flavors like kimchi, yuzu, and shiso. If you don't like shiso leaves though, stay away from that one. Mm. To be honest, after a while, it was hard to figure out which ones we liked the most. But they were all delicious, except for the shiso. And I kind of wish that my tummy could fit even more food because I'd like to try everything. But I'm only human, so instead of overeating gyoza, I decided to just look at them at the souvenir store. They have some of the cutest gyoza merch I never knew I needed. Like this gyoza mask advertised by the lovely gyoza anime lady. I bought some omiyage for friends and this gyoza pouch for myself. Utsunomiya is only 45 minutes away from Tokyo by Shinkansen. And of course, you can use this pass to visit this city and check out the gyoza statue! Or maybe just stick with eating all the gyoza. Yeah. Number 2. The weird and wonderful new ginger museum at Tochigi City. I don't know about you, but I personally am a huge fan of weird and wonderful things. Probably part of the reason why I find Japan so fascinating. And right now, I'm going to bring you to a museum that is all kinds of weird. And if you love pink, it's also wonderful. If you don't, well, you're about to be tickled pink. This is Iwashita New Ginger Museum. As the name suggests, it is a museum promoting the new ginger in a fun and quirky way. Highlights include the ginger shrine. Shrines are called jinja in Japanese, so this special pink shrine is literally called jinja jinja. The ginger room. It looks like a love hotel, but I do love all the details. I mean, it's pretty cool. The ginger mascot. Iwashika-chan is the mascot of this museum. It's a deer with ginger horns. It's adorable and at least it's, you know, kind of PG. Unlike everything else in this museum. I mean, look at some of these things. Anyway, they also have a cafe where you can try various menus with the new ginger. And the best thing about this museum is that it's free. Well, not the cafe, but everything else. It is a little out of the way though. You gotta take the Shinkansen to Oyama Station and then change to the JR Ryomo line to get to Toshigi Station. It is a 15 minutes walk from there. Is it worth the visit? Only you can be the judge of that. Number 3. Seasonal Winter Illumination at Ashikaga Flower Park Winter in Japan is not complete without illuminations, and Ashikaga Flower Park is definitely the spot to visit if you'd like to experience Japan's illumination wonderland. In 2017, it was selected as one of the three great illuminations in Japan. And in the illumination ranking, yes, there's such a thing, they have won the first place in the whole country for six consecutive years. How's that for bragging rights? So was it pretty? Yes! yes! Out of the winter months, Ashikaga Flower Park is also very popular for flower viewing, especially when the wisteria blooms. I haven't had the chance to visit it in May, but I'm so glad that they brought the wisteria tunnel alive with illuminations! The atmosphere there was just so romantic. I mean, there's even a castle, so you can have your happily ever after romance right there, as long as you don't mind the crowd. Everything was just so pretty and so magical. I didn't even want to leave the place. Okay, I lied. It was cold, so eventually we kind of have to leave. But I also got hungry and had a bowl of sano ramen. Sano ramen is made with water of the finest quality listed in the 100 best spring waters in Japan. And yes, there is also such a list. I think I might have to visit Sano City myself though to try another bowl because this one didn't satisfy my taste buds. But it did warm me up enough to enjoy more illumination. What's also great about winter illuminations in Japan is that they do last pretty long. This one in Ashikaga usually begins in mid-October and they will be on until Valentine's Day. They also have a pretty awesome shop where you can buy tochigi souvenirs as well as plants. Ashikaga Flower Park has its own station on the JR Ryomo line, also covered by the Tokyo Wife Pass. So those are the three interesting spots I'd recommend you to visit in Tochigi. Which out of these three spots are you most interested in? Let me know in the comments below. 
And that leaves us with one more day with the Tokyo White Pass. Because it's winter, let's head to somewhere cold. Day 3, Niigata. It was my last day of using the pass and today we're going to the snow. I bought some snacks as this would be the longest Shinkansen journey of the trip. It takes a bit more than an hour from Tokyo to Gala Yuzawa Station. I love how the landscape changes as we ride the Shinkansen. This is the place you want to go if you're only doing a day trip because as soon as you arrive at the station, you're in the ski resort. It is so convenient for those of you who want to give skiing or snowboarding a try but don't have a lot of time. Or if you're just like me and you just refuse to do any sports, extreme or mild, then Gala Yuzawa is your perfect destination. We purchased a Gala Yuzawa Yukiasobi or Snow Play Pass from JR East Travel Service Center on the same day that we got our Tokyo White Pass. The pass itself cost 3,500 yen per person and that gives us an all-day gondola ride, a round trip on the sightseeing chairlift, boots and sled rental, as well as a pair of gloves for us to keep. This is a really good deal if you want to experience the snow. So now that we got all the goods to survive, let me show you how you can enjoy a Gala Yuzawa snow trip without actually skiing or snowboarding. Or as I'd like to call it, travel the Julie way. Take the gondola and soak in the best view comfortably and without having to move much. And what I love about Japan is that instead of packing strangers into gondolas, they let you ride with only the people you know. And did I say how beautiful the view is? Once you've arrived at the Cheers rest area, put your bag in a coin locker so you don't have to carry things around. You can rent a locker at the rental area, but it costs 1000 yen and it's before your gondola ride. But there are actually coin lockers at the rest area and they are cheaper. Ours only cost 300 yen and you can access the locker multiple times during the day. And when you're done, you even get 100 yen back. Score! Experience how it feels to be like all the other skiers and snowboarders taking the chairlift up the mountains. Once you're up the Barouche chairlift, visit the Love Bell Observatory, overlooking the Tanigawa mountain range and Mount Hakai, one of the three mountains of Echigo. The view is gorgeous and, because everyone else is busy skiing or snowboarding, there's a huge chance you get the whole space to yourself. And once you're done admiring the view, you can return back to the rest area using the same chairlift. Most likely, you'll be the only one taking the lift down. But do not be ashamed. Tell yourself you're getting the VIP treatment. Find a good spot in the rest area to eat and drink and watch everyone else doing their thing. There are three areas to eat at Cheers. The main food court, Niigata Specialty Restaurant, and Blue Seal Okinawan Food. Now, you'd think I'd go for Niigata Specialty because I'm all about local cuisines, right? But there's something so enticing about eating Okinawan cuisine at a snow resort, so I opted for that. Also because I'm really weak when it comes to chili con carne and hot dogs. And yes, it was tasty. We also had the Blue Seal ice cream. And because we're adults, we don't share our desserts. I had the Blue Seal Okinawa salt cookies and the Ryukyu Hojicha Warabi Mochi flavors. And they were both delicious. Oh, and we also had another pit stop because I wanted to try the soft pretzel with cream cheese. Remember to find a window seat because you don't want to miss the pretty scenery. Once you're full and happy, it's time to play! Let's head to the Yukiasobi Park. This snow play area might look like it's designed for little kids in mind, and it probably is, but we're all kids in some ways, so why not enjoy it? Grab your sled from the rental area and head to the snow escalator that will take you up to the top of the hill without breaking a sweat. You see, I'm a scaredy cat with most things in life, so I was a tad nervous even on this kid-friendly sled. But once I started sledding, I realized how much fun it was. Just like a kid, I was going again, again, and one more time after every round. The snow escalator is also a lifesaver. I remember tobogganing in Australia and literally got tired after like two to three times of having to carry my own sled up the hill. So yes, thank you snow escalator, you the best. Oh, and apart from sledding, you can also enjoy playing with the snow at Yukiasobi Park. We built our very own snowman with Mickey ears and I was pretty proud of it. Can you do better? Before we knew it, it was time for us to leave. 
I'd have to say the day went by really quickly and I had so much fun. I hope this encourages some of you who don't ever want to ski or snowboard to still find a day to enjoy the snow mountains. And I highly recommend Gala Yuzawa, especially if you're using the Tokyo White Pass as it is so convenient to get there. I will definitely be back. So that's three prefectures in three days with this one pass. I really enjoyed this trip and I felt like I was able to do so many fun things in a span of just three days. A huge thank you to Japan National Tourism Organization for giving me some budget to plan, create and share this fun trip with you. And nobody asked, but in terms of food, if I have to rank it, let's just say I'd go back to Takasaki just to have more of those yakimanju parfait. In fact, we kinda did for three days straight. This was us on day one, on day two, and on day three. And that's the great thing about having a pass like this. It allows us the flexibility to travel freely in three consecutive days. I will leave a link in the description with all the info you need to get the Tokyo White Pass. I've also been posting my travels on Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe to Omonomu for more fun travel and food content. Last but not least, remember to have fun and eat snacks. Bye!